Tabloid goes bowling. <laughs> in on North America's fastest growing participation sport, bowling. From the Eglinton Bowling Lanes in North Toronto, Joyce Davidson, Percy Saltzman, and Gil Christie send out a half hour of fun and bowling games that they hope is right down your alley. The first woman of bowling, Marion Dibble, is with us, and the inimitable inventor of five-pin bowling itself, Tommy Ryan, is on hand. <laughs> Here, convinced that life is just a bowling alley, is that lovely lady of the lane, tabloid's own beautiful bowler, Joyce Davidson. A guest named Tommy Ryan on this show on Robbie Burns Day. Dick McDougal will be turning in a sick bed of the thought. Remind us to book someone named Angus McPherson for March 17th. Well, here we are, on location, as they say out of our regular studio habitat and looking forward to a lively half hour with you. But never far away is weather and its electronic interpreter, Percy Saltzman. Perth, Ontario stages its uh, dog derby and snow queen contest tomorrow, Perth. What word have you about the weather in Perth, Perth? I, I mean, Perth, Perth. Okay, Joyce, I'll tell you. Hi. Well, let's see. Yesterday we had our cold air coming up upon us and it was through Sault Ste. Marie. And there was snow ahead of it, and there was also a stormy area down here in Texas expected to come along. Actually, what happened is a combination of the two, the cold air coming through and the storm moving up to about Detroit, Cleveland area now that gave us the snow that we've been having, and in some cases, they're still having. And that line of colder air runs south of the Great Lakes, and the low pressure area is here near Cleveland and another one here near Pittsburgh, and the entire portion of the eastern part of the continent is covered with poor weather. The snow extends up to about Muskoka and far back to Chicago and then down through Pittsburgh in this area. Farther south, of course, it's rain and there's a front with 60 degree readings, 80s in Florida. 30s on this side of the line, not out in the water, but in the coast here somewhere. And on this side, although the winds changed to north, it wasn't soon enough and we had 20 in Toronto. We got up to a, just above 10 degrees in the Ottawa, Montreal region after having stayed about that all night. The temperatures during the night here ran about 15 degrees. Farther back though, it was quite chilly in the cold air. At White River and at Graham, it was 50 degrees below zero this morning and warmed up to about five below during the afternoon throughout most of northern Ontario. Fort William here had 37 below, which is the coldest they've had in six years, the lowest reading. And generally speaking, there was a minus 10 in Goose Bay, minus 30 in the Ungava Frobisher area, and the same up here at Coral Harbor and about minus 10 at Churchill. Well, the front is down here and another storm is brewing here, which is expected to attack us over the weekend. That is on the Sunday, perhaps. But meanwhile, the cold air is moving down and we should get deeper and deeper into it so that all of our regions here should have a fairly good day out of it, albeit somewhat colder. Now, the far west, of course, the front comes back here well south of all of Canada. It's been extremely cold and mostly fairly good weather. The temperatures this afternoon ran at about minus 5 in Winnipeg and minus 10 in the southern part of Alberta and Saskatchewan after morning readings of 30 below. Very chilly even during the afternoon in the interior of BC. There were some 45 below readings up in northern BC and Vancouver with 8 had the coldest temperature it's ever had in the last 5 or 6 years and got up to about 25 this afternoon. Very cold in this region too, but once more that funny phenomenon of the warm air coming up over the top of Alaska and down here showed readings of 20 degrees above zero in this area, although on either side of it, the temperatures were extremely cold. This is already working down. We've had a 10 above in central Alberta, near zero, or just above it in the central part of Saskatchewan, and that is moving through. Well, they're getting the warm weather, but of course, we're getting the cool weather, and after that, on Sunday, there'll be a low down here working up in our direction to perhaps give us some more snow. But meanwhile, we're expecting the snow that we now have to end, temperatures to drop to 10 tonight here, minus five and zero here, and then rising tomorrow to 15 in Toronto, to 5 above at Ottawa, and to 10 above at Montreal, and generally, for tomorrow then, fair. And that's the weather picture. By the way, Rex Loring had expected to be with us tonight, but our man Rex has come down with laryngitis. Loring is not roaring tonight. Is there anything less useful than an announcer without a voice? Rex realizes that this is how Marcel Marceau got his start, but he prefers to wait at home for his voice to return anyway. We'll hope to have you back by Tuesday, Rex. Okay. So much for tonight's bulletin from Sick Bay. 
Stan Hellier, please, copy. By the way, a pair of lovely and great ladies of international theater, Catherine Nesbitt and Judith Anderson, arrive in town next Monday to perform in the Chalk Garden at the Royal Alexandra. Now, both these gracious actresses will join our group on Monday evening. And now, Percy Saltzman has made his way from his Chalk Garden, slipping out of his weatherman wedgies into his bowling sneakers en route, stands by now, ready to interview Marion Dibble. Oh, Marion. Uh, you have been one of the first woman bowlers in Toronto. When did you start bowling? In uh, 1916. And at that time, was bowling popular with the ladies? No, it wasn't. What reason? Well, because they was all men bowling, and it was a man's game, and the ladies weren't invited into it. Well, some of them managed to because you did, didn't you? How did yes, you manage well, to get in? I used to go bowling in the morning when there wasn't any men around. Did you dress uh, in any special way in those no, days? No, I just wear the same things I'm wearing today. And uh, when the men got to see you bowling, what was their reaction? Well, it was, uh, I had a match with a man that the first match I had was with a gentleman. How did it work out? Well, I beat him for, for five games and I beat him. That must have really destroyed his ego, eh? Yeah. Well, now, through the years, you've seen bowling grow in popularity. Uh, how did it happen that women got to be more and more interested in the game? Well, when five pins came in, that's what started the ladies off bowling. What and did you bowl to begin with? Well, I bowled ten pins first. How did you manage the huge ball? Well, that was very easy, and I only weighed 110 pounds. Amazing. Would you say that bowling is a good sport for the ladies? I say it's wonderful. It's wonderful for your figure, and it's wonderful for, for sportsmanship. It's the best sportsmanship I know I've thought of others, you know, yes. golf and things. It's sort of an effortless way to diet, eh? Yeah. Well, you certainly managed to keep pretty <laughs> trim throughout the years. Did you ever decide to give it up? Or you? No, I hope I don't have to give it up. And in your career, have you bowled championship games? Yes, I bowl lots of championship games. Have you won trophies? Yes, I won trophies too. What have you got, for example? How many? Have well, you got a rough I, count? I've got about I've got about eight trophies. Miniature cups and a lar large cups. Are you in a league at the present time? Yeah, two leagues, I bowl. Oh, twice a week then. Yeah, you twice do. a week. How's your team making out? Not very good. What's the matter? Well, I guess we're not good enough. How about your children, Mrs. Dibble? Are they bowlers well, too? They, yeah, they both bowl. They're very good bowlers. Uh, do they beat Mama, or can Mama take them in hand? Oh, they, I can take them in hand, too. What changes have you seen in the game since the well, earlier days? I've seen a lot of changes. Because oh, when we first started to bowl, when I first bowled, there was only no rubbers on the pins at all. Well, what would that mean? You mean the rubber ring around the center? Yeah, of the no, there, there was no rubbers on it. Well, was that, what was the result of putting rubbers on well, the game? Well, the result of putting the rubbers on the game give you a better average. You, you've got bigger, larger scores. Oh, I see. It makes the pins fatter, they can be hit, yeah. and they bounce around yeah, more likely. Mm -hmm. uh, this was, of course, introduced on five pins only. The ten-pin game no, did not have these. No, no, not ten pins. Just five pins. When did five-pin game come into? Well, I think they've been going around uh, 20 years, between 20 and 25 years. Did you take to it right away? Yes. Well, I was the first president the ladies had of the CBA. What is that, CBA? Well, that's uh, the uh, international called the OBA now. A bowling association. A bowling association. What is the, uh, can you remember what the highest score is you ever managed? Me? Mm -hmm. 420. Out of a possible, uh, let me see. 450. Goodness, that's a kind of a record. And I used to have an average of uh, 230 and 238. In the early days, when ladies yes. didn't find the game very popular, and you were one of the proponents, sort of a suffragette of bowling, did you have, find it hard to convince your gal yes. friends to come out? Yes, I did, because they didn't think that ladies should go in bowling alleys. What were they afraid of if they did come well, in? Well, there was so many men around all the time. Oh, one of them thought that was an opportunity. Yes, but uh, we, uh, we bowled in the morning. Then we, then we got a team. We got two teams, one from Hamilton and one from Toronto. I see. Well, how's your game now, Mrs. Dibble? Well, just fair. What are you averaging currently? About 200. Uh, <coughs> how would you like to have me a game, Mrs. Dibble? I'd love to have you bowl your game. All right. Now, look, uh, don't show me up in front of all these people, will you? I'm kind of out of practice. But nevertheless, let's go. Ladies first. Well, she wets her hands, so I'll wet my hands. And uh, we'll watch. You go ahead. Make it good. Oh, say, Gil, how about you being our Phil Stone? Okay, first. Oh, I think I better go. 
laugh, Joyce. I'll get into the Mrs. Dibble in her first frame has 15 points. She knocked down all but the head pin on two. Of course, I got this one. Percy is still in his first frame. I hit the hole there, but make a Dibble, point. I don't think they're going to give me much for that. I have to get the four pin down, huh? Mrs. Dibble bowling in her second frame has six points. By the way, which is the four? Oh, the four pin's on the other side. Percy registers a big goose egg in his there? first frame. I've got to make one strike at least. Mrs. Dibble has 15 points in her second frame, and Percy's 30 in total. And a strike in her third frame, which we mark this way. Percy is in the out. Bad luck for Mr. Dibble. That's it, that's it! <laughs> Percy, <laughs> get the head pin. And so he gets nothing in his second frame also. I don't think I've got anything. Two goose eggs. I think the fellow's forecast is a low for tonight at zero. So Marion Dibble continues to eclipse our Percy, who as a bowler forecasts a mean forecast. I want you to meet my guest. He's new here at these lanes, but he can't help feeling slightly proprietary about the place and the game. He invented the game. He's Tommy Ryan. Mr. Ryan, welcome to Tabloid. When did you invent five-pin bowling? 1910, in March of 1910. What gave you the idea? The gave me the idea was to make a faster game and more interesting than the 10 -pin game. What slowed down the 10 -pin game? Well, patent the roll, set up 10 pins, 10, 10 pins, and the heavier ball, and made it faster by having the five pins and just a smaller ball. Where did you get your first pins? The first pins I originated, I, got, I turned down the old 10 pins, went and got a lathe from Geary's down on Front Street, brought it into the back of the bowling club and turned down the old 10 pins to the size I wanted. Were they of uniform Seven size? Inches. Seven inches high. Do they all weigh the, the same first, like they do now? After the first, no, no. After the first few games of the road in the alleys, the pins flew so fast by hit with the ball, they were so light that they went out through the windows down in front of that good jewelry store. Well, of course, the old bowling ball would be much heavier than the one today, too, wouldn't it? No, but the it's one the same we use is exactly the same. Oh, I see. What were the old bowlers like, Mr. Ryan? The old bowlers were the most aristocratic people you ever saw in your life that we had because it was a club. And uh, you had to be a member of the club to get into it. And we had to celebrate the people that elected Sir John Eaton and his directors. Did you interest them in, did you interest them in the game? Interesting, absolutely. What strides have um, been taken in the game then recently? I, then I went, after three months or four months, after I'd screen the window so the pins wouldn't fly through them, I went up to Gutterford and Rubber Company and had to make the rubber band to go around the pins, and that made it a better game because in the old days, when the like of Alderman Sam McBride at that time used to roll a ball, I'd seen him in the league game where three balls were touching the pin. Uh, how many types of bowling are there? Are there? You mentioned ten-pin bowling. Well, there's ten-pin bowling, there's candle pins, duck pins, what are they like? Duck pins are small belly pins that are much lower, and when you hit them, they squawk like a duck. Oh. That's where they derive their name from. Is it played anywhere in Canada? But it did, no, it's played down around Baltimore, played in Detroit, a few places like that, but it's not as popular as the five pins. What are you doing now? Well, I'm in an antique business and have been for a number oh, of years. Right. How did you get involved in the... Uh, the antique business? Well, I started when I came from Guelph, a young fellow at 18, went into one of the biggest wholesale houses, Down Extension Company, of which there's only one member left today, that's Mr. Watson McLean, of the Kent McLean Showcase Company, and he's 90 at the present time and full of life and pep. And uh, I turned around and from handling fine china, cut glass, sterling silver, and all that type of thing, and traveled on the road for 14 years, 
I got a good knowledge of everything in the antique line. It's really more like an art gallery, isn't it? It was a real art gallery. I had 20 rooms filled full of gorgeous antiques. And during this time, you told me you had time to uh, play hardball. I, when I was young, in 1896 and 7, I had an offer to go and pitch for Baltimore Orioles. Why didn't you take it? Well, because the money in those days for baseball wasn't like it is today. The highest priced ball player at that time was Amos Rusey, who pitched for New York and got 2,500 a year. And I was able to make 2,000 a year with my commissions and salary. So selling John, I was afraid to take a chance and leave a good job. It was last work, too. Absolutely. I asked you before about um, the recent strides in the game in, the recent, in recent years. Well, it's made wonderful strides in the games for the simple reason it's much more interesting a game, the five-pin game, and more exercise, just as much exercise as the 10-pin game, but not as hard on the feet. And consequently, the ladies have taken it up to such an extent that today we've almost got more ladies playing than men. Yes, and it's become quite a family game, and too, hasn't it? And you take young and old and get a great interest of it. And now they're even teaching children to play it. Teaching children to play it. Some of the alleys are devoting the morning two or three hours for children to come and learn at 10 and 12 years of age. I know the president of the Bowling Alleys Association and at the present time. I'm going down to see the boys some of these mornings. How would you like to stand and watch the game of the century, Mr. Ryan? Well, I certainly will. All right, let's. Hello, Mr. Ryan. Mrs. Sibbo is beginning her second game now. The points were 15 points in her frame. And the first game, as you may be noticing right now, uh, Mrs. Sibbo defeated Percy by a score of 125 to 104. He has 10 on his first frame. He's in his second frame of bowling now. You don't bowl like you're 80 years old. Why is that? Not a smidgen. Well, you beat me the first time, but I'm going to try now. See if I can get you. For some reason or other, I either take out the headman or I leave the headman. It's not bad bowling. Bad bowling when you don't hit the headman. Now look, Mrs. Devil, I'm all whacked out, really. I, I've had enough, and you're still fresh, and you're going strong, so. If you don't mind, I'm going to call it quits. Okay. Okay. All right. Me, Mrs. Stubble? Yeah. Uh, listen, I, <laughs> after watching you bowl, I think I'd just as soon take you out for a cup of coffee. Okay? Yeah, you're All right. Afraid, eh? Yeah, I'm afraid. <laughs> Tabloid can't seem to do a remote without running into a Pepiot. We met one at the War Amp Center last November, and today, too, we meet one. He's Harry Peppiot, manager of the Eglinton Bowling Lane. Harry, I understand you're quite a trick bowler. Oh, yes, I do it uh, off and on, you know. Practice quite a bit uh, being a bowling alley manager. But, uh, How often would you say it's necessary to bowl to become a champion? Well, you have got to get out two or three times a week anyways. That often? Oh, yes. I mean, one night you can't do it. I mean, you need practice. How long have you been bowling? 22 years. How long have you been doing trick bowling? Well, off and on for the last 15 years. Would you demonstrate for me now? Certainly. I tell you, I'd like to say one thing, that uh, at the start there, Percy was going to throw two balls down there when the pin boy was in the pit. He should never do that. Why? Wait until the pin boy's out of there before he throws his second ball. Is there actually bowling etiquette? Oh, there's bowling etiquette. What are some of the points? Well, one of them is, uh, so you do not go over the foul line and you'll improve your bowling. And uh, the other is do not walk across in front of a bowler when they're bowling. Or if the bowler's bowling alongside of you, wait until he is uh, through bowling and then you do your approach to your alley and throw your ball. Now 
this trick bowling is, is uh, bowling between my legs and uh, I've bowled some of the top bowlers in the city at this. Do they have tournaments for trick oh, bowlers? No, no tournaments at all. But Earl Pocock on TV, champion of the day, at O'Connor there, uh, I challenged him, I beat him, and he's beat me. And he is a very, very good bowler. Couldn't bowling through your legs be a little dangerous? It is. You could break a leg if you don't know what you do. Show me. Yeah, that's certain. Now, when you grip the ball, the way you pick it off the rack is exactly the way you should hang on the ball. Comfortable Would grip. this be one of the first things you teach a new bowler? That's one of the first the things. The fundamental. How to hold the ball. That, that way there is comfortable. You can't drop the ball and you turn it. Then you can work a backup ball or a curve, whichever way you want to throw it. But you just can't come in off the street with a, with a bit of practice. You can be some bowler, but you still got to bowl two or three times a week. Well, I haven't bowled for years, so you show me your tricks. Okay, I'll just show you a few of them right here now. Uh, just bowling between the legs. ball is going the same speed as I normally throw it. It is. <laughs> There's one of your etiquette sure, you see, points he, again. I may have thrown a ball down and broke his leg, you see. Always watch and see that he's out there. Now, I'm going to throw a backup ball possibly get those two pins. Very good. What else would you tell a new bowler? <laughs> well, I tell them not to do that, but to follow right through. I'll show them one, if you don't mind. A Could new you do bowler. it just quickly for me? Mm -hmm. I'll do it quickly. The idea is to follow right through with their hand. Don't drop the ball, but follow right through. And they, their hand will be going where they're aiming and they'll improve their bowling an awful lot. All right. Thank you, Harry. I hope my bowling improves Thank after you very this. much. <laughs> well, it is a fact that uh, bowling is the most popular participation sport in the world. And I think right now we should call on a man best qualified to tell us why. Bernie Porter. Bernie is the owner of this bowling emporium in which you've been having so much fun tonight. Bernie, just why is bowling so very popular? Well, I think the big reason is that uh, everyone can bowl and become a good bowler from 8 to 80. It's a good, healthy sport for all members of the family. And members of the family can bowl together. You find that all members of the family do go bowling? Yes, many leagues have uh, fathers and sons and uh, mothers and daughters in the same league, and sometimes grandchildren all in the same league. Well, now, just how many people do bowl in Canada? Do you have any idea of the number? Well, in Canada, there must be uh, well over 300 or 400,000. That's remarkable. And about 100,000 of those bowlers are in the Toronto area. That's right. And uh, we said last night that 60% of them were women. Uh, why? <laughs> well, uh, women have taken to it more than, uh, recently, and uh, I think one of the big reasons is it's a, uh, an exercise that they can do and that they know it's good for their figures. Also, in the evening, mixed leagues, uh, they find that uh, their husbands have been at the bowling alley so often that if they wanted to spend some time with their husbands, they should join the league. So they did, and they formed mixed leagues. Mm -hmm. Well, then, of course, women just bowl in the afternoon by themselves. Yes, yes, in mornings and afternoons, women have uh, ladies' leagues who bowl regularly, and uh, some uh, women bowl two or three or even four times a week. Do you see any uh, examples of uh, temper relief at all in bowling? Oh, I would say so. Uh, in many cases, uh, temperamental people find that bowling is a good release uh, in uh, getting rid of their uh, tenseness. Uh, they bowl and uh, getting their, a good uh, game in, they find that it uh, helps their morale. Mm -hmm. Does it help your morale to bowl? It does indeed, yes. How long have you been in the business? About 10 years. What do you bowl, Bernie? About 190. <laughs> about 190. That's pretty good, though. What it am isn't, I laughing about? really good. <laughs> you don't think so? No. Uh, do you get kind of frightened when you see someone bowl a perfect game? No, not at all. I'd like to see more people bowl a perfect game. I think it's very good for the sport. I suppose it is. Well, it's been a perfect evening here. It certainly has, if we didn't bowl a perfect game. Thank That's you very right. much. Bernie Porter. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Well, 
Joyce, uh, you bowl, don't you? Not for years, first. You haven't for years? No. Oh, that's good. And uh, you broke your right wrist, didn't you, Joyce? Something like that. And it's never healed quite right, has it? Uh, are you refreshed or something? Uh, Joyce, what do you say we have a little game here, huh? All right, Percy. Fair, uh, though. Women bowlers. Fair. Come on. Come along. Oh. Remember now, I have this full skirt on All right. and a mic. You can take it off if you wish. I got caught in the mic. Oh, tough luck, kid. The four pin is on that side. See that? Fifteen. Fifteen. Are they scoring us? Nobody's scoring us. Keep the score in your head, Joyce. I've got fifteen in frame one, and you've got a blow, huh? Strike! Oh, no. What did you get there, huh? 60% <laughs> of 100,000 bowlers in Toronto are ladies, they say. Mm -hmm. Go on. Ah. Actually, it's, it's, actually, it's not fair. There should be a lighter ball for them. What am I doing wrong, Mr. Ryan? Yeah, what's you doing wrong, Mr. Ryan? Don't tell her. Well, that's, uh... Uh... Don't trip on the court, Joyce. 